Next we have, I'm in the right day and everything this time. Next we have Whitney Kramer from Cornell University talking about creating new data reference models within existing library support structures. All right, thank you so much for having me today. I'm just gonna- Looks make... great. Perfect, thanks. So good morning, everyone. My name is Whitney Kramer and I am the ILR Research and Data Librarian at Catherwood Library at Cornell University. Um, Building a bit on what the last two presenters talked about today, I'm going to discuss how I incorporated subject-specific data reference and instruction into our existing reference model at Catherwood, which is one of 14 libraries at Cornell and the premier industrial and labor relations library in the U.S. I'll discuss how I crafted services that are meaningful for our constituents, along with some lessons I learned along the way who, that other librarians who are looking to implement similar models can apply at their own institutions. Um, as some background, I was hired in 2019 into a newly created position that was primarily tasked with implementing this uh, data reference and instruction for the ILR school and the economics department. Why did we need a da data librarian for these subjects? Catherwood staff had observed a significant increase in both data focused assignments in ILR classes and reference questions at the library. So while there are other librarians across CUL providing reference services, ILR had no direct support in this area and no librarian with the experience or the capacity to provide these services. Uh, so to help you understand the populations we're serving, here's a couple just quick demographic facts. Cornell is a large research university, 15,000 plus undergraduates, around 10,000 graduate and professional students, and close to 3,000 faculty and academic professional staff spread across 14 schools. ILR, which is one of New York State's land-grant colleges, is one of the smaller schools with about 1,000 plus undergrads. And Cornell has, just to make things a little more complicated, also recently restructured a number of departments across campus into super departments that cross multiple schools. As part of my liaison responsibilities, I support the, e the Econ Super Department, which incorporates the Economics Department in the College of Arts and Sciences, the ILR Labor Economics Department, and the Economist at the newly formed Brooks School of Public Policy. So that's a lot of faculty and students who are um, spread across campus and who have historically been supported by a few different libraries. Um, at the Cornell University Library, we have just over 300 total staff, about 100 librarians and archivists. There's currently 10 to 12 librarians with some data responsibilities, and some of them, like me, have additional liaison responsibilities on top of their data work. Our liaison model is really complex and is complicated by the new super department structure. That could be a whole talk in itself, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on that today. Um, this is a pretty big group of data librarians that we have compared to many institutions. And we're really lucky to have that many FTEs working with data, but with 100 plus academic departments, many with high data needs, it's a lot for us to cover. So it made sense instead of cross-training one of Catherwood's existing librarians to hire a point person who could provide these much needed data services, since our liaison model meant that other data librarians were primarily focused on their own constituencies. Uh, data services at CUL also serves as one part of this larger research data management service group, which provides comprehensive data management services across Cornell and enables close collaboration between the library and other units on campus who are providing data services. Uh, my first step when I was hired was to assess the needs of our students and faculty. The context of our institutions matters really greatly when determining user needs, and it's such a large university, I not only needed to gain an understanding of those existing data services, both within the libraries and elsewhere on campus, but I also had to learn what was unique about Catherwood's user base to determine what services I should provide and when it made sense to refer to existing campus data services. So I asked myself the following questions. What are the needs of my liaison departments? What specific services would benefit our constituents? And what can I bring to the table that isn't offered elsewhere? So I started by reading through our extensive historical documentation of reference transactions, instruction requests, old lesson plans to see what trends in data focus questions emerge. Um, I found a few immediate things that I could work on incorporating into our reference and instruction model that weren't covered by other libraries or data services on campus. I determined it would be a better use of my time to focus on the discipline-specific data literacy and the need of, needs of students who primarily need help in the earlier stages of the data life cycle, as opposed to later stage data needs like data management and storage. I also spent some time brushing up on my statistical software skills, namely R, Python, and Stata. Uh, students and faculty were often coming to us for help locating and accessing existing data 
often microdata, which didn't seem to be as much of an issue for disciplines outside of the social sciences and humanities. My colleagues with liaison responsibilities in the hard sciences were reporting that they primarily provided support for researchers who were dealing with data that they themselves collected. So while assessing previous reference transaction, I noted that a high percentage of students coming to our library for data help were from the same undergraduate classes every semester where they were required to utilize data for empirical analysis or to incorporate into a research paper. And I also found that we were doing a lot of consultations with students who were completing an honors thesis who were coming in specifically for that same help locating data. So between that and the data focused class assignments, we quickly learned that there was a void in undergraduate instruction at ILR. Professors were assuming that students were being taught these key data literacy skills elsewhere. So students were learning the statistical analysis skills, but not how to find the data that they were supposed to analyze. Um, I'll also note that we weren't only hearing from students, but from faculty as well, particularly those working with ILR's research institutes who often have their own complex requests for existing data. So many of these faculty data management requests were being handled through the existing services that were already offered through RDMSG. But I had learned that the existing data support was largely focused on two things. So the needs of those in the hard sciences and then data management as opposed to earlier stage or student focused data literacy and instruction. Out of all the pieces of this infrastructure, the library is really the only one focusing on locating and evaluating existing data and on providing support to undergraduate students on this front. So these are really key skills for students in the social sciences as, um, and who are just starting their research careers. So altogether, this comprehensive assessment I had done helped me see that the support our students and faculty wanted for locating and evaluating existing social science data wasn't really being offered elsewhere and was a key service we could provide at Catherwood and led to the creation of this bottom-up student-focused approach. However, there were some challenges putting this into place. So one challenge I initially faced was getting existing faculty on board. Even three years in, I am learning that convincing faculty that empirically focused classes and research can benefit from library services is an ongoing battle. Fairly early in my tenure, one faculty member told me that Economists don't use the library, which I think stems from the same misconception that many faculty hold. The library is only for books, and we're not the place to go for data support. This is starting to change, but it was a bit, it threw me off a bit at first. Um, for example, one labor economics professor requires students to locate and analyze government data for a research paper and had historically been reluctant to allow librarians time for a data literacy focused one shot because it would take away from his teaching time even though many of the students are coming to li the library for help with these assignments. Um, the super department model can also make outreach tricky because our liaison models have evolved over the past few years to support these new structures. And we often must rebuild these faculty relationships from scratch. Depending on the previous liaison relationships, some faculty may not even be aware that we provide data literacy support or other data services at all. And as, since I started in 2019, COVID was a major challenge as well. The abrupt shift to work from home removed opportunities to organically connect with students and faculty, which probably set some of this work back a bit from where it had been if I had spent the last three years fully in person. This combined with staffing changes made determining the best departmental contacts a challenge. And when I couldn't walk down the hall or to the next building over to ask questions in person, making these connections took more time. However, the new econ grad student coordinator has been very receptive to working with the library and promoting our services and programs, which has been a very good lesson in figuring out who your champion in the department is in order to help you make those connections and ensure the success of your outreach. So what have we done so far? In contrast to the initial roadblocks I ran into, I did have a few faculty who were very receptive to incorporating data literacy instruction um, into their empirically focused classes, or some who were at least open to discussion on the topic. One professor had not realized that so many of her introductory stat students were turning to the library for help. And I'm now taught a one shot for that course that primarily focuses on introductory data literacy and locating data for five semesters in a row and consistently receive feedback that students find it extremely helpful in getting started with locating data that meets their needs. We've also learned that sometimes faculty don't want classroom instruction, but they seem to love course guides. And we've learned that we can be flexible in what library instruction means when providing support to classes or departments that might need something different than what we traditionally provide. So next slide. While most of our lab guides at Cornell are links of lists of links to databases and other resources, I've begun utilizing lab guides as instructional resources unto themselves, which is not as common here at Cornell. 
So this has been really helpful in providing instruction for data literacy concepts, especially when the professor doesn't want that in-class support or instruction or can't dedicate time to a full session, but agrees that students would benefit from that additional data literacy knowledge. So I have two different examples here, one that's built in conjunction with the intro staff class I mentioned on the last slide to provide more in-depth instruction in accessing data from the general social survey. And the one on the right is the data research for labor economics guide that I built in conjunction with Sharissa Jefferson from Princeton. Um, I'll mention that our poster on this collaboration is available on the conference's OSF website. And I've used this for some classes this semester that didn't want in-class instruction, but wanted to give that intro to data literacy. I also experienced almost immediate out success with my outreach effort to econ grad students. While some had found their way to Catherwood, they had gotten a bit lost in the shuffle with prior liaison switches, so many of them didn't know where to go for help at the library. Um, I started by expanding Catherwood's existing model of sending emails to all new grad students and was initially confused why I wasn't getting a ton of responses, but I soon figured out that econ grad students spend much of their first year prepping for qualifying exams. And this really drove home the importance of gaining an understanding of the curricular needs and cycles within academic departments so you can understand when the students you're working with require the most support. And I've also made a presentation and Q&A session to their graduate student organization a regular part of my early semester programming, because when I think about utilizing those curricular cycles to inform my work, this is often a great time to check in with students at the beginning of their second or third years when they're really starting to delve into their research and their data needs are picking up. So utilizing this bottom-up outreach approach um, for students and an assessment of their needs to inform our services also extended to undergraduate services as well. Um, in early 2020, another data librarian and I noticed that we were both receiving a number of similar data literacy focused requests from upper level social science undergrads in different disciplines. And we actually both saw what I had noted earlier. Faculty assumed that students had not had been previously taught those key data literacy skills by the time they began tackling advanced research, but this was not always the case. While courses and other units on campus Three minute warning. All right, thank you. We're um, covering the statistical analysis and data management pieces. Nobody was covering earlier stage data literacy, especially for social sciences and undergrads. So to fill this void, we created a six week seminar series to introduce students to core data literacy concepts and provide in depth instruction on various elements of finding and evaluating quantitative data sets. Um, Going back to the idea of finding champions in our constituent departments, we found several undergraduate research programs that were very excited about the workshop, including one that made it a requirement for students to attend. And in the interest of time, I'm happy to share more information about this with offline with anyone who might be interested. But I will say that the, this experience and the feedback we received solidified that student-focused approach to our data-focused reference and instruction was the correct one for us to start with. Faculty were generally covered in the existing data structure, but undergrads and grad students in the social science disciplines had largely been left out. We've learned we can't assume that even a college senior or graduate student has mastered these skills, and providing the subject-specific support has been very beneficial to both the students and the faculty as part of their classroom instruction. So now that we're in a few years into this, how am I planning for the future? I found from consistently supporting empirically focused classes how important it is for students in econ and ILR to gain those critical data literacy skills as early as possible in their academic careers. Uh, one of my goals for the coming year is to have a more formalized program for economics undergraduate honor students. We see quite a few of them for consultations, particularly when they're searching for data. So expanding the work we're doing around data literacy from one shots in individual undergraduate classes to a longer seminar for the honor students, similar to the one we did in 2020, seems like a very natural next step. I'd also like to expand our reference services for ILR's research institutes, many of whom are working on very data heavy projects and were unaware of the ways the library could provide support in this area beyond the existing data management support. Also, as we ramped up this data focused work, one of the most common questions I get was whether we could assist faculty and grad students in purchasing data sets. Our collection development policies prevent us from purchasing data sets that can only be utilized by a single named researcher, but building relationships with faculty and students helped me learn more about their data purchasing needs. And as a result, I've been able to be very involved in library wide conversations about the future of our data collection development model. Uh, one of the biggest challenges on this front is a lack of central funding for purchasing data sets. And I think being involved in these conversations will hopefully help increase funding for both social science data sets and other data needs as part of our collection development budget. Advocating for the needs of our patrons has helped others in my organization see how crucial the work we are doing with data is for our constituents, especially for our undergrads and grad students.
Overall, I think we've had a pretty successful first few years of incorporating data literacy and related services into our reference and instruction model and centering the needs of the undergraduate and graduate students who need the support the most. I've learned quite a bit along the way, and I'm looking forward to trying and expanding the work we're doing in coming years. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you so much. Great timing. Thank you. Um, and I think this echoes really well the experiences with the other, this very specific gap <laughs> for assessment and, um, and the complexity and faculty's unawareness of, of where things are going. We've had, uh, or, or where things have been more like. We've had some comments in the chat about how similar experiences have happened other places and um, the value of your assessment approach. And you. our first question is, can you tell us more about the six week webinar or the topics in it maybe at least? Yeah, so um, we, this was during, we had initially designed this, um, the initial plan had been an on-campus six week one where we thought we'd learn, focus more on um, hands-on data literacy skills, maybe some data analysis. COVID happened, we had to switch to Zoom. And we also realized we wanted to give students this introduction. So we structured it, it was six weeks, each week was a different topic. And each week we had a guest speaker after our initial presentation from another library or data service on campus, or in one case, a panel of graduate students to help undergrads contextualize how they could do graduate work in the social sciences and apply data to that work. So we did a session on developing your research question, um, figuring out then how your research question, how you could then use data to attempt to support your research question. Um, we did one on working in groups and teams, data organization. We had um, someone from our data reproduction service come speak. And we also did one on data citation as well to really kind of drive home that point that, you know, kind of bring everything full circle. We also had an accompanying Canvas shell with where we posted all the recordings, readings, mo um, some modules. Um, and that was really helpful because since this was during the pandemic, Cornell had many students who were in different time zones um, spread across the world. So a lot of students took it asynchronously as well. Oh, no, good I, also, point. That... I also have a research data queue editorial on the subject I can drop into the Discord when I once I dig out the link. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Thanks. We have another question. How or, or were you doing, how were you doing assessment about data set purchasing? Was that assessment or what kind of questions were you getting? Maybe it was a lot of mostly collecting questions. This is something we're definitely very like in the weeds on right now. We get a lot of questions from faculty and students who've located specific data sets that they would like to purchase. And it's often a lot of determining whether, you know, it's something that the entire library can use licensing wide, or if it's something we'd be able to store in the future for people to use. Um, we're actually having some big discussions next week about what our data collection development model could look like in the future. Because thankfully, um, some of the higher ups at the library are starting to realize we may need to push more funding towards data sets. But the challenge, you know, is a lot of times, especially with economic social science data, a lot of the um, people who are, you know, you, you want to buy the data from only want it to be utilized for a single named researcher. So figuring out those library licensing challenges is still a big one for us. I wish I had a better answer about that, but it's very much in progress. I can only say, yeah, plus one. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. Data sets are so complicated. Ah. Yeah, we. I, I asked colleagues, um, economic librarians at other institutions, what their policy looked like, and everyone pretty much said they're in the same boat. I don't know how to do a paper on that if it hasn't been done already. That might not be a bad idea. 